Today in our 2015 Cadillac SRX, we're going to be installing Roadmaster's crossbar style base plate kit. If you're thinking about flat towing your SRX, you need to keep in mind that there's five major components you're going to need in order to flat tow. You're going to need your tow bar, which is going to connect your motor home to your vehicle. You're going to need your base plate installed on your vehicle, which provides a connection point to your tow bar. You're going to need your braking system on your vehicle that's going to help it stop when you stop on your motor home. And you're going to need your wiring, which transfers all the lighting signals from your motor home back to the lights on your SRX. Finally, you just need some safety cables to keep yourself safe in the event of a failure. Our base plate is from Roadmaster. It provides a connection point for your tow bars here. This base plate will work with any Roadmaster tow bars, but there are adapters available here at eTrailer.com to allow you to use tow bars from other manufacturers. The base plate will install behind the fascia on the vehicle, so it's going to be mostly hidden. You are going to be able to see the safety chain connection point here on the base plate, as well as the connection point for the removable arms where your base plate attaches to your tow bars. We'll begin our installation with the hood open and we need to remove the plastic panel here located across the front. There are six push pins that we're going to need to remove across the front. We'll use a trim panel tool or a flat bladed screwdriver to pop out the center of the pin and then you can pull the entire pin out after the center's been popped up. We're going to do that to all the pins and pull those out. The weather stripping that goes across the top it removes pretty easily. You simply pinch it. You'll want to pull it towards the side of the vehicle and it releases off of those tabs. So we're just going to do that up until it separates there and then the same thing down the other side. Now we can pull up our paneling. There is a push pin located on the driver's side here. Just give it a good pull and that'll pop right off and we can set this aside. We'll then need to remove all the bolts across the front of our fascia here using a 10 millimeter socket. Now in our fender well, we're going to need to remove all the bolts running down the inside edge here. We're going to use a T15 Torx socket to do that. To access these, you may need to turn the steering wheel to give you more clearance to get your tool in there. Now you can take your fender liner, you're going to peel it back, revealing the single bolt located behind it. We're going to use a 7 millimeter socket to remove that bolt. We then turned our wheel the opposite direction and there's one more torque screw located behind the wheel there that we're going to remove from our fender liner. It's going to use the exact same size. We're then going to repeat those same procedures here on the other side. We're now underneath the vehicle. There's three bolts we're going to need to remove from the center using a 10 millimeter socket. Now you may or may not have rivets located here at the top. If you do, you are going to have to drill those out so you can release your fascia. You'll want to use a 1 inch drill bit to drill those out. We can now remove our fascia. Starting on one side, you're going to want to pull out and up on the outer edge to release it. Once you get one side released, you'll do the other side. And with both sides released, we can pull it forward. Now you don't want to come out too far because you are going to have some electrical connectors behind here that you're going to need to disconnect. You'll have a connector on your driver's side. There's a grayish colored lock tab. You'll need to pull that down first away from it so you can push in on the release tab there and then pull it off to separate it. Double check to make sure you don't have any other electrical connectors. Some models may also have fluid lines going to them for your washers, for your headlights. You'll disconnect those as well if you do have those. Once everything's disconnected, you can set it aside where it won't get damaged. We'll now remove the power steering cooler located here on the front. There's two bolts. We'll take off with a 10 millimeter socket. I'll just kind of lift up and pull out. Now on our driver's side, we're going to remove the four bolts holding on the end of our bumper beam to our frame here. We're going to use a 13 millimeter socket. Once 
We'll now take our driver's side bracket and we're going to line that up with the holes where the bolts were that we just removed. You'll know you have the correct side if the circular end and the excess is going towards the center of the vehicle and there's nothing sticking out off on the outside. We'll then reinstall the bolts that we just removed. We'll now repeat this on the other side as well. You'll then want to hold your fascia up and take a look through the side holes here to make sure that it's going to fit through this general location. You are going to have to do some trimming in this location to get it to fit. But you just want to give it a quick dry test fit to make sure that it's pretty close to lining up. If everything looks good, you can then tighten down all your bolts that we removed and we'll torque those to the specifications found in your instructions. On each side, we'll remove the electrical connector just above our bumper beam. We just went to remove the whole harness. So we're just gonna pop this pin out here. And that'll let us push it aside. We're gonna do that on the other side as well. We'll now take the largest bolts that come in our kit. We're gonna slide those up from the bottom here through our base plate and through the frame up to the existing hole in our frame. It may be necessary to drill the frame out in order to make this fit. As you can see here, there is already a hole there, but it may not line up right. And if that happens, you'll have to drill it out. Depending on how far it is off, you may need to use a different size. You'll want to have a hole at least a half inch when you're done to allow the bolt to fit up into. You'll then want to place a little Loctite on the threads of the bolt that we just pushed up. And on top, we'll place our larger spacer plate that comes in the kit. Make sure you don't pinch any of the wiring underneath of there. Followed by a lock washer and a nut. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. We'll now take the shortest of the large diameter bolts that come in the kit. We're gonna place a flat washer on it, like you see there, some red Loctite. Then we're gonna slide it through the opening and the back, the rearmost lowest hole in our base plate here. On the back side, we're gonna use the smaller spacers, followed by a lock washer and nut. It may be necessary to drill these holes out as well. If yours don't fit through, you use a half inch drill bit just like before. We're gonna do this on the other side as well. Now we'll take a half inch drill bit and we're gonna use our base plate as a template and drill through the bumper beam. There's two layers of metal in the bumper beam. You need to make sure we drill through both layers and you wanna make sure you're careful not to go too far and damage any of the components located behind it. We'll now take the medium length, larger bolts that come in the kit. We're gonna put some Loctite on it. We're gonna slide that bolt through our base plate and bumper beam. Then on the back side, we'll be placing the larger spacer plates, followed by a lock washer and a nut. We're gonna use the same hardware in the other hole that we drilled out on the other side. We can then go back and tighten down all of our hardware using a three quarter inch socket and wrench. Then torque all of your hardware to the specifications found in your instructions. We'll now take our accessory mounting bracket. We're gonna place it in the center of our bumper beam here. This is the weld nut where we removed a bolt so we can get our power steering cooler out of the way. We're gonna reuse that bolt and this weld nut. And we're gonna bolt our accessory plate in place using that hardware. And you wanna hold it up until it's about level and then tighten it down. We'll then use the self-tapping bolt that comes in the kit and we're going to run it into the other hole in our bracket. 
We're going to use a 10 millimeter socket to do this. We're then going to remount our power steering cooler. The little tabs that are located at the top, we're going to need to bend those straight so that way they're not in the way. So we see we're just taking it, we're bending it up. And we're just bending it so it's straight. We'll then take the smaller bolts that come in the kit. We're going to slide a washer on it. It's going to go through our cooler's mounting bracket. Then we're going to go through the accessory bracket that we just put in place. And we're going to follow that up with a washer, then a lock washer, and a nut. The other mounting bracket for your cooler is going to go into your base plate. We're going to use the same hardware. Slide it through just like that. Follow it up with washer, lock washer, and nut on the other side. Then we'll tighten those down using an 11 millimeter socket and wrench. And now we'll prepare our fascia for reinstallation. We are going to have to remove some of the foam behind here so that way it'll clear. So your electrical connector here, you want to pull that off. And then this section right here, we're actually just going to break this section off. And we're ready to put our fascia back on now. On the front side here, we're going to need to enlarge the openings on each side of our grill here for the base plate to poke through. This section here, we're going to be cutting off along these little edges here, and we're also going to have to chop it down here and here. And after you turned up the opening, this is what it'll look like when you're done. And we'll do that on the other side as well. You can now reinstall your fascia following a reverse procedure of how you took it off. I do recommend, however, that you leave your fascia off. If you're doing a complete flat toe setup, this is a great opportunity to do your diodes and your braking system, because with the fascia off, you're going to have a lot more room to work, and it's going to make the rest of those installations easier. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's crossbar-style base plate kit on our 2015 Cadillac SRX.